I want to follow up a little bit and discuss the phase delay of signals as this is often a tricky topic that students um, first encounter when they're dealing with sort of time-based signals. So again, let's represent uh, one particular voltage signal uh, like this. All right, and again, we have some sort of amplitude, some sort of frequency, and then some sort of phase. Now, the main idea with this phase delay is that it's, it's the relative phase between two different signals. And if there aren't any other signals, then the phase delay itself is, is honestly just zero. Um, but in sort of our first example, let's imagine this wave right here that's oscillating like this, and then a second wave here that is oscillating a little bit behind it. So if we were going to write out an expression for this first wave, we might say that its phase delay is zero as it's sort of our, our base wave. But for this other wave that comes along, because it's, it's behind, it's sort of later in time than our black wave, this um, wave right here is going to have a negative phase delay. So it will be behind in terms of uh, a quarter of a phase, and it is, it is considered that it lags. So if the black uh, line is sort of Vt of 1, and let's say that this red line is Vt uh, 2, then we will say that Vt2 will lag V1. Uh, so we'll say that the red wave, the red wave lags the black wave in time, because remember our phase is always relative to time. Now we could have a, a similar situation again where let's imagine again I've got two waves. Let's call the black wave our reference wave, and then we'll have a blue wave here. But imagine that the blue wave uh, occurred slightly before the black wave. So again, we can say that the phase delay on the black wave here is zero, but because this blue wave is in front, it, its peak actually occurs before the black wave, we will actually give it a positive phase delay relative to this reference point of zero. So again, if the black wave is uh, V1 and the blue wave is V2, then what we would say here is that V2 uh, leads V1 in terms of time. So phase angle is, is sort of relative to between two different waves, two different waves. Um, V2 here, the blue wave, is in front of V1 in terms of time because it occurs earlier in time. Uh, V2 over here, the red wave occurs later in time, and so we, we say that it lags. That because this one is behind, this one lags, and because this one is in front, this one uh, in particular leads. A couple uh, definitions for us going forward. If one wave has a phase of uh, phi one and another wave has the exact same phase, then the waves are considered in phase. And so what this means is that both of those waves are completely just overlapped on top of one another. And so if we had, again, a black wave and then a red wave, these waves would be completely in phase and overlap each other. Now, if I had a different situation where if I had one with a phase angle of, one, of phi one, and then I had another one that was off by 180 degrees, um, this would be out of phase. And so what we mean by this is that the waves are just completely a half period apart. Um, they're actually completely destructive with one another depending on what their angle is. So if I have this wave right here that's like this, a wave that is completely 
out of phase would look like that. And these two waves, again, if they were the same amplitude, might cause uh, destructive interference. So this is sort of what your noise canceling headphones try to do, um, is to create a wave that's completely out of phase to knock out sounds that you don't want to hear. Uh, final thing about this phase angle is that I keep telling you it's, it's really in units of time, but then in the previous examples I've written it in terms of like pi over four, or I've written it in terms of like negative 180 degrees, and so there is a little bit of challenge, um, even though this does relate to time, actually getting it back to certain units of time. So what we can do is, is you know, 0 and 360 are the same distance apart. It's, it's a full rotation on a circle. So if we want to talk about the time shift between two waves, um, we can look at something's phase angle, Divide it by uh, 2 pi if it's in terms of radians. If it was in terms of degrees, we divide it by 360. But then you want to multiply it by the period of the wave. So basically, you're trying to figure out how much of this entire period is this wave off. So if I'm, you know, 90 over 360, and that's my phase, then I am one quarter of the period away. And so it gives you a relative understanding of how close and how far apart um, these waves might be. So if you're trying to understand the delay between two signals, you need to take uh, this phase angle again, uh, put it again over 2 pi if it's in radians, or 360 if it's in degrees. That gives you the fractional portion that it is out of sync in terms of the period. And so if something is a whole wave apart, if it's a whole period apart, like 360 over 360, then the, the signals are actually in completely in phase um, because they're overlapped and they're completely uh, aligned with each other. So this little addendum was to help clarify a couple issues in relationship to the phase delay. A couple important things to remember are first that the phase delay is sort of relative to each other. So again, in this blue example, the blue one occurs in front of the black one, so it leads. In this example here, the red one is after the black one, so it lags. And that if two waves have the exact same phase, then they are in phase and they're in phase and they're completely coincident. And if they are 180 degrees out of phase, um, then they're completely destructive. So this is a quick tutorial again on the phase delay, and this will come into play when we start to do more of our phaser analysis.